and welcome to our Christmas Eve celebration. And it is a celebration, so there may not be many of us, but let's be loud, let's stand. We're celebrating because tonight is the night that we celebrate when our Creator and our King came to Earth to join us as a human, to walk where we walk, and to ultimately become our Creator. So let's all sing out and let's have some fun and let's praise Him tonight. Ding dong! The heaven the bells are ringing, ding dong, verily the sky is ribbon with angels singing. Oh, 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 in excelsis, ding dong, ding dong, in the low. The steeple bells be swung in, and the yo yo yo, the priest and people sung in. Oh, 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 of sin is broken, ding dong, open up your eyes, the celebration starting. Oh, 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 was born 
Christmas, friends. You may be seated. Merry Christmas to all our friends watching online. Also, so glad to have you, and so great to celebrate our Lord and Savior's birth, huh? So, um, as, as you know, Pastor Doug and Karis are away this Christmas Eve, but they send their love, and so we're going to do a little bit different this Christmas Eve. We're going to have a couple Advent readings. We're going to do some worship, and our brother, Pastor Paul from Graceland Church, is going to come up and give our uh, Christmas message. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. So first, our brother Rich is going to come up and do the Advent reading. How's everyone doing tonight? So I got to first to start off with Isaiah 714. It says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will come conceive and give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel. Matthew 1, 18 through 23. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her from the Holy Spirit, she will give birth to a son, and you will be in your, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Come and 
and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, the birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first time census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, 
who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared in, with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who, who was laying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. Stand with me. Let's join those shepherds this, to this evening. When shepherds kept the watching, oh, silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens, they shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and every. Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus and hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. Silence with glory in the highest, the hope of all creation resting in his mother's arms. The song on the rising, 
ringing through the heavens. The long awaited Savior has come to set the captives free. Come to set the captives free. Come to set us free. Oh, pass his name, Emmanuel, the light of the world who broke through the darkness. Oh, hail the King, Emmanuel, the light of the world, the glory of heaven. We didn't see it coming, the story of redemption. What started in a manger. Ended in an empty grave. Oh, I know that. Hope has a name, Emmanuel, the light of the world who broke through the darkness. Oh, If you need healing, he's where you'll find it. Lay down your burdens and breathe in forgiveness. If you need freedom, oh, yeah, he's where you'll find it. Oh, if you need freedom, yeah, he's where you'll find it. Thank you so much, guys, for that worship. That was that was wonderful. And thank you to Rich for doing the uh, first Advent reading and to our sister Esther for doing the, uh, the Christmas reading. Let's pray, friends. Th- thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you, that you came. Thank you that you are our God, our Savior, our King, and also our friend. Thank you so much for that. Thank you th- how humbly you came to this earth. Lord, we thank you for this time. Please... Bless our brother, Pastor Paul, as he gives a message to the Savior and Holy Spirit. Just speak through him. Help to show us Christmas in a new way. Help us to just, even through the message, just love you even more than we already do, Jesus. In your precious and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. And so now, given our message, I know you guys have heard him preach before he was here with Doug. It was a couple months ago. And gave a wonderful message. He's from Graceland Church. Everybody give a new river welcome for our brother, Pastor Paul Blotchy. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Okay, so that was for me. Can we do it for Pastor Dog, who I believe is watching? Oh, come on. Right? Now, can we do it better for Christ, the reason for the season? Hello? Oh. Signs of the times, right? Um, it's, it's definitely an honor to be back here. Uh, I consider this place home, and if you welcome me, please make me feel welcome because I consider this place home. Uh, the, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. The other day when I was here, 
Thank you. Uh, I had people who were watching all over, some from England, who were asking me, um, how long have you and Pastor Dog been preaching together? And I was like, no, that was the first time. They were like, oh, wow. How long did you practice? I'm like, practice? This is all God. You know, when God puts things together, things just flow, right? So um, it's an honor to be here. Um, greetings to all those who are watching from uh, the Internet, Facebook, YouTube. Um, I know he prayed, but can we pray again? Prayer is good, right? Hello? Yep. Father, this is your day. This is your event. This is your word, and we are your people. Do in us that which brings you glory. Let your word have its free course in our lives. And at the end of the day, may Christ be evident and be eminent in our lives, in our hearts, and in our world today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, um, I usually like to look at the birth of Jesus Christ um, in three ways. First of all, I like to look at it as what is the cause of Christmas? Why do we have Christmas? And then I also like to look at it as what is the cost of Christmas? What did it cost God to put together Christmas? And when I say Christmas, I'm talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. And then I like to also look at the cast of Christmas, the characters that God used in bringing us Jesus Christ. And when you put all this together, I, I believe that it encapsulates the essence of Christmas that God would rather have us focus on. So for this short presentation, I decided to call it God's gift. God's gift. And a few scriptures, two scriptures actually, that I want us to um, use for our time here today. The first one is coming from Matthew um, chapter 1, reading from verses 21 to verse 23. Um, and it goes like this. It says, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Whew, I don't know about you, but that makes me feel good. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is with us. Oh, say it like you believe it. Say it like you believe it. God is with us. The next scripture I want us to glean from today is Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, reading from verse 4 to 7. And it, it says, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons or children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer slaves, but children. And if children, then heirs through God. Ooh. I don't know about you, but we could just close right here and go home. <laughs> so, a few things I want us to understand. Number one, from the scripture we read in Matthew, we understand the, the three main reasons why Christ was born. The first one is salvation. The Bible says, he shall save his people from their sins. And I want you to pay attention to the wording here because it's interesting that God was calling us his people even before he saved us. Santa would have me believe that whether I'm naughty or nice would determine what price or present I get. What a beautiful contrast. 
that before we were even considered worthy, God is calling us His people. So the birth of Christ was because of our sins. God had it necessary because we were caught in our sins. Our parents, Adam and Eve, introduced in our DNA a sin problem that had no cure. And that's why Jesus Christ was born. And we see that in that scripture. He says, the purpose is that he will save his people from their sins. Isn't God wonderful? You know, I always like to trace the birth of Jesus Christ to the proclamation that God had in the, in the garden in Genesis when he said, the, the, the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. So God announced Christmas, which we celebrate as recorded in the Gospels. He announced it in Genesis, which tells me that God is procedural and God is punctual. He may have said it, you may not have seen it, but he's working on it. What do they say? They say God might never come when you think he should come, but he's always on time. I'm not sure what UPS has done with your gifts or FedEx. I'm not sure what the weather has done to your timing or your tracking. But I came to announce to you the second scripture we read from Galatians says, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. God's gifts are never delayed. They are not denied. No storm under the sun can delay the gifts that God brings to us. You know, it was Charles Dickens who wrote in his novel and said that it was the worst of times and it was the best of times. I don't know if Charles Dickens had a picture of 2020, but I think he was prophetic in that statement. And it mirrors the first Christmas because the conditions under which Jesus Christ were born were not pristine. They were not conducive. There was political turmoil. Hello? Anybody? Right? There was geographical shaking because people had to travel. And then you add together Mary carrying a baby and her husband was not physically responsible for the baby. Then you say family drama. You know, Jesus had an interesting family, didn't he? Kind of reminds me of my family. Oh, maybe I'm the only one with a family with drama. Hello, hello. Right? Right? God knows how to pick up. But interestingly enough, that was the condition in which God found it perfect. So some of the things we can learn from the Christmas story or the birth of Jesus Christ is that God does not wait for conditions that are conducive to you to fulfill his word. So when you look at the news or you read the news or you look at what's going on in our surroundings, never ever look at what's going on around us and think that God's will will be delayed or denied because of the conditions. When the fullness of time had come, there was no room for him. You know, UPS will leave you a note and say, because you were not home, we took away your gift. But God said, well, there's no room, but I will make room for my gift. Why? Because my gift, my son, needs to save his people from their sins. Nothing stops the gifts of God. Nothing not even the denial of room. There was a lot of space, but no room. Kind of like our society today, we have a lot of time for everything else, but no room for Christ. Salvation. The next thing is that the Bible says that, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, because he shall be with his people. Cohabitation. God wanted to stop the long-distance relationship that he had. Anybody been in a long-distance relationship? I don't know how we were doing it before Skype and email and, I mean, um, FaceTime and video call and all that. But we were doing it and God said, no, 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 no. So now the gift that was born as a boy is no longer a boy. And one of the things that we do is that we become sentimental and we treat Jesus Christ like he's still the boy in the manger. He's no longer a boy. He's not even a man. He's the prince of peace. 
And he says, his name shall be called Emmanuel. So even though they gave him a name, the significance of the name outlives the people who gave him the name. Emmanuel simply translated, God is with us. So the birth of Jesus Christ signaled God tabernacling with us or being with us. The Bible says that if you confess, in the book of Romans, it says if you confess Jesus Christ after believing him in your heart, that he's Lord and that God raised him from the dead and he is everything that the Bible says he is, you are born again and you are Christian. And the, and the book of Romans tells us that God or the, the Holy Spirit begins to live in you. So when people ask me, where is God? Where is God? Where is God? My temptation is usually to point to heaven. But Emmanuel says that God is not just in heaven, but he is with us. He's with us. And so God's presence with us is not predicated on how good the times are or how beautiful your Christmas tree may be at home. God's gift is predicated on the fact that his word, in the fullness of time, nothing stopped his word. And if his word was true then, then his word is true now. And what does it mean? It means God is with us. That truth cannot be lost on you. Otherwise, we will go through the reason, no, that we'll go through the season, every season, without knowing the reason for the season. The reason for the season is Christ. And the Bible says that he is with us. He is with us. He was with us in the beginning of 2020, and he's with us now. That's what the word says. If, if, the, if, if the birth was true, and the salvation is what it was, then the cohabitation also is true, because he is with us. He's with us. The third thing I want us to emphasize on is the presence and the manifestation. The presence and the manifestation. That is something that is unique to you and I. The presence of God is not found in physical things. The presence of God is found in the manifestation of his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit is with us. He lives in us. That is something that the world does not always comprehend. Because we live in a world where everything is based on proof. If you can prove it, I, I believe you. But we come from a kingdom where the currency is faith. So I know God lives in me. I may not be able to prove it to you, but I know he lives in me. And that belief begins my manifestation. The manifestation does not be begin my belief. My belief begins the manifestation. You know, the thief on the cross, he didn't go to Bible school. He didn't take a discipleship class. He didn't even quote scripture. He just trusted the Lord Jesus Christ with his eternity because he had nothing to lose. And the Bible said, you would be in paradise just like you are. He didn't meet the disciples, nothing. He, I mean, he, he went from thief to first class ticket to paradise. What did he do? He trusted his eternity to Christ. When we trust what God has said, we accept his salvation. We live like Christ is in us, cohabitation, and we understand the presence and we understand what it manifests like. The world would have us believe that God is God only when things are going great. If 2020 has taught us anything, it tells us that God is God in the storm, on the mountain, and in the valley. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Talking about God's gift, there are two things I want us to focus on and then I'm, I'm done. The gift of God is exclusive and inclusive. The gift of God, first of all, is all inclusive. I tell people all the time, and a lot of church people have a problem with me when I put it this way. I tell them, God did not send Jesus Christ for the church. God sent Jesus Christ for the world. There can be a tendency to culturalize and customize God to your taste. 
Because we live in a world where you can buy anything and customize it to your taste, right? You, you can customize your guitar to however you want it. And we kind of bring the same preamble to God. No. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to, so that whosoever believeth in him, right? Who did he send his son to? The, the state of Connecticut? The U.S. of A? No, he sent him to the world. Anyone. So the first part of the gift of God is that it's inclusive. All are invited. Everybody is invited. But he didn't end there, right? He says the invitation is for all who will believe in him. So whereas the invitation is all inclusive, the use of the gift is exclusive. Why? Because until you and I Put our trust in Christ. He remains a gift that was given, but not received. So we are all invited to the gift of Christ, but the use of that gift is exclusive to those who believe. And it's those who believe that have eternal life. Talk about the gift that keeps on giving. You know, if you work for a company and they give you a cell phone, they're not responsible for charging the cell phone. They're not responsible for answering that cell phone. That's you. Have they given you a cell phone? Yeah. Have they given you access to communication? Yes. But whether or not you will communicate using what has been given is dependent on you. If you don't charge the phone, you have a phone, but you're not using it. It's the same thing with the gift of Jesus Christ. He's for everyone. No discrimination. But the only ones who have the access to use this gift are those who accept him as Lord. Many of us are going to go home shortly and we're going to have arrangements depending on the kind of tradition you have with your family. You're going to open gifts. And everybody's gift has a name on it. The gift of Jesus Christ has your name on it. And it has my name on it. And it has your family's name on it. Your neighbor's name on it. Unfortunately, it has your enemy's name on it, right? Anybody with enemies? Hello, right? Okay, now maybe not enemies, but people who get on your nerves, right? Some of them happen to be your family members. <laughs> right? But their names are on that gift too. What God is depending on us today, in 2020 today, is whether you allow others to partake of that gift. Because some people will only see Christ through you and through me. The Christmas story will only come alive to someone because you, are, you make them understand that you have a gift underneath that tree. So in spite of all the lights, remember, he's the light of this world. In spite of all the gifts, remember, he's the gift of God to this world. I'm challenging you that you make someone partake of this gift through allowing Christ to be seen in your life and in my life. This Christmas, unbox Christ so that someone will enjoy the exclusivity of knowing what it is like to be a child of God. If you're here, I would just kindly ask that you bow down your head. And I want you to just reminisce on what it took God to send forth his son, knowing very well that he would have to change his nature. He would have to adapt to a new nature. He would have to consider loving people who were going to betray him. He's going to have to live with your sins and my sins on his shoulder, something he was not accustomed to. Some of us even have a trouble coming to church when church times are changed. Can you imagine changing your whole nature? 
but he did that for you and I. I want you to consider what the inconvenience it took of stepping down his standards just so that we can have fellowship with God again to fix that which was broken in our DNA. And then I want you to pray in your heart and ask Christ to be the centerpiece of your Christmas. You want to ask God that the meaning, the essence, the relevance of Christmas would not be lost on you. That Christ was born for our salvation. Christ was born so that God can have cohabitation with his people. And then I want you to finally agree with me as we pray. But before that, if you're here and you are not fully taking advantage of the gift of Christ, or your, your life is not aligned with Christ, you don't have Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you're not fully yielded to Christ, I want to give you that opportunity to do so because that's the essence of everything that we're doing. Shall we pray? Father, we are in awe of your love for us. That you did not allow our inabilities and our faults and failings to withhold your love from us. We are so grateful that your love is not conditional. Your love is not predicated on how well we behave. We thank you that your love is all-inclusive. Your invitation is all-inclusive. Your gift is all-inclusive. Help us understand. Help us yield our lives to you, Lord. So that we can be children of God. Just like you called us to be. I pray for everyone who's here, who, anyone who's listening, who might be battling and struggling with their faith, Lord. Restore their faith in this season of miracles. Restore their faith in this season where you brought hope. I pray that if there's any marriage that's going through trouble, just like you saved Mary and Joseph's engagement, Lord, you will save marriages in this season. Bring families together. Preserve families, oh God. And despite whatever turmoil might be going on preserve the purpose of Joseph and Mary that's what you did preserve our purposes Lord preserve our families bring comfort bring peace you are the Prince of Peace in Jesus mighty name I pray with thanksgiving somebody say amen, amen. hallelujah amen. amen amen why don't you celebrate God tonight You know, we pass around the candles, um, just have a nice time of worship uh, with a different source of light than usual. Um, obviously, there's nothing normal about this year, so um, unfortunately, we had to forego the candles. But as we just learned, there's a brighter light shining that we carry with us that no candle can match. And you're also, you are welcome to use your cell phone flashlights if you if you just want the full effect. But let's, let's just uh, enjoy this time together as a family. Let's praise our King for the amazing gift that we have before we go out and share it with everyone around us. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, around yon Virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly.
Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from my holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar. Online. You are dismissed. God bless you and have a Merry Christmas.